Hi, this is Magnus here, and today I'm going to do a quick video on not only my computer specs, but also what I do to edit the 5D Mark IV files that I have right when I pull them in the camera and how I can get them to work pretty quick. The inspiration to this video came from Peter Gregg, and recently he bought his 5D Mark IV back, and I hope to think that a little bit of what I said in my last recommendation helped him out a little bit. So, hello to Peter. What I want to do here is show you the way that I can do things, the way that I that my computer works, and what you would need possibly to be able to edit as smoothly or maybe even better than me if you, once you get a computer with my specs or better. I'll show you a couple of things that do make my computer chug a little bit, and I'll show you other ways that I'll edit to get around that chugginess and and to edit smoothly. If you have any suggestions that could help improve my editing, or if you think that uh, I might not have covered something that you might want to have seen, please let me know in the comments. But here we go. I'm going to take this footage that I'm doing as my intro, and this is what I'm going to use to edit really quick and show you how, guys, how I do that. All right? See ya. Here we are at the computer, and first things I want to show you is how my computer runs, what I have on my computer, the specs on my computer, and then what I do at least to get started when it comes to editing footage from the 5D Mark IV. Now remember, all I did was connect my CF card into the memory card slot. So first I'll show you. I'm running Windows 10. I've got an Intel Core i7-3770, 3.4 gigahertz. I haven't overclocked it. I haven't changed anything on the computer. All I did was build it, leave it as is. There's no cooling system that I have, no water cooling, just built it, put in the stuff in the computer, and then just said, okay, here we go. 16 gigs of RAM, 64-bit processor. That's it. That's what Windows 10 is running. Now, on my computer, I, the video card that I have installed is an NVIDIA GTX 970. So that's what I'm working with here. Also, what I wanted to show you was the fact that I'm running a couple of hard drives. Most of these are external hard drives connected USB 3.0, which is what I edit on. I don't add, actually edit in the hard drive that's inside of my computer. But this is the hard drive inside of my computer, about a terabyte, and it's a solid state drive that I've got in there, a Samsung solid state drive, specifically to edit quickly and, and use my software to have it load and run really fast. My computer boots in less than 25 seconds. And that to me is a huge advantage to get in and get into your workflow quickly. Now, I record into a Zoom H4n, so I already transferred one of the files. Actually, I had to have a second trial because I messed up the first take. I'm not a one take wonder. I wish I was, but sometimes I gotta do two or three takes. So. On my second try, I actually got it. So what I'm going to do now is, like I've done in my videos in the past, go into the folder, and that was the first take, and here's the second take. Second take I pulled in. Now it's uh, it conformed the footage, and here I got it on my computer, right off the CF card. Sometimes I'll edit off the CF card, depending on the amount of time that I have to edit, or other times I'll just transfer it over to my external hard drive so I can clear out the CF card and work from there. So first thing I'm going to do, I transfer the footage right onto a timeline and now I'm going to transfer the audio into the timeline as well. Make sure that's on the same channel. I'm going to highlight them both. Right click, click on synchronize, audio, track one, hit OK, boom, now they're synced. Now I'm just gonna oops deselect that make the timing on the click together mute this first channel and let's see what I got sounds good sounds like I've got my audio channel synced now what I'll also want to do is raise the volume because I like to get this to go to between 12 and 6 the volume. It seems to be a little low, especially when I zoom in here. I've got it somewhat low. So I'll hit the audio gains and I'll, on average, when I record on my device, I'll record about 10. And I hope to think that it's a little louder, so now you'd be able to hear me. 
which is bit of what I said in my last the week. point. That's what I want. So um, here, as you can see, what I did was I clap to sync the audio, which is what I'm trying to do. Now, from this screen, I will actually go to Window, Workspaces, Color. And I apologize, my uh, normal settings is to work off my second screen here. So, off my color, I want to, you know what? Let me take that off of here, put it in here. Much better. Sorry about that. I'm used to using two monitors, and this monitor is, is uh, usually on that side. So what I like to do is adjust my exposure, contrast, bring up the blacks and shadows. Uh, maybe not so much on the shadows. But uh, get a little cooler and turn up a bit of the saturation, just a bit. Maybe a little cooler. Oh, that's fine. Uh, maybe I look a little green. I'll bring that back down to zero. Actually, I'll turn down the saturation a bit as well. Well, I could play with it. I don't have to go too crazy. But I, you can see my point. But one, one thing when I do add the color correction that I want to show you guys, and I go back to the uh, editing portion, bring everything back to normal, and here's my edits, is that once I do this slight little color correction, to this video I, my video does get a little bit it. more I jittery. I... Again, not perfect, but it is a little bit more jittery. Now for me, can I still work with this? Sure. But what I'll, what I'll at least do to improve the workflow is turn off my color edits so that I can edit a lot smoother, as you can see. Now what I'll do is because I got these two channels separate, I'll actually do a new sequence, and on my new sequence, I'm, I filmed in uh, 24 frames per second. I'll call this the editing sequence. And then I'll drag that first timeline that I had the, in the original footage. It'll ask me to change the sequence settings because I've got this in 16 by 9 format, but it'll want to convert it to the format of the Canon 5D Mark IV that has that Cinema 4K format, that DCI 4K, which is a bit wider. But I'm going to say to keep my sequence settings the way they are. Now let me check to make sure I've got the sequence settings the way I want. I want it to fit into a 16 by 9 frame, but it still didn't quite do it the way I want it it because it's got the 4096 by 2304 so in traditional 4k the regular tv style 4k when you buy a uhd monitor it's not full 4k it's actually uhd which is 3840 by 2160. i want to keep that 16 by 9 format now what this will do is fill my frame but the sides are cropped out on the footage so if i actually slowly decrease the size of this footage you're gonna notice that I'm missing some on the side because of that cinema 4k format but I filmed on purpose to account for that so I knew that I had to be closer to the center because anything too much to the side would be cropped off plus it wouldn't be that interesting to film that way anyway so I can edit start making my cuts right now you know and, and whatever I find as I'm editing and I say okay I don't want this I don't want this bring these two together okay let's say I cut a full video the way I wanted you know even though I would add more details to it I would go back to my original footage and I turn on the effect 
So now I've got it looking the way I want. But my audio channel still, I said in my last, has some feedback that I don't enjoy. I want to clean out any noise. So I'm actually going to edit clip in Adobe Audition. It's going to open up Adobe Audition, which is an audio mastering software from Adobe. And I just do a quick one-two punch to my footage. See, I stay quiet on purpose for some of my footage because I want to capture a noise print. So I'll go to effects and noise reduction, capture noise print. So the software will ask, you know, we're going to use this as an example of what noise sounds like. So it just captured this. And now, as you can see, there's a bunch of these little spots where I have that noise. Inspiration to this but if you listen to me Peter talk, who suggested it, I want there's still that noise everywhere. So, because I have not removed it yet. So I select all, I'm going to go to effects again, noise reduction, noise reduction process. I don't get too complicated with the effects because if I put them too high, then I sound more robot -y. If I put them too low, then what's the point of noise reduction? I'll hit apply. And now it pretty much canceled out all that extra noise that I had. Hi, this is Magnus. It's here. almost completely silent. I'll do a quick save. And then I'll just close out of it. And now Adobe works to replace my audio with that. Again, it's jumpy because I turned that on. So, made cuts, replace the audio. See, still jumpy because I've got those effects handed. Now, it's not too bad. I can still work with that. But it is what it is. As smoothly. And it's still workable. Then I'll go to export my media. I'll hit the settings and the quality that I want. Usually I'll do at least about close to 65 to between 65 and 80 to maintain as much of the quality as I possibly can. I'll output the same frame rate as I filmed in just to keep things one to one and the ratio 4K. I'll hit export and it'll output the file wherever I want. Of course, I'll rename it and put it in the file that I, the setting that I want and then that's it. Granted, I do a lot more than just that. I put some more time into it, but this was a quick tutorial as what my computer's like and how I edit and how it only takes me a couple of minutes. You saw me from loading the footage to adding color correction, doing quick cuts, and then outputting. Just a couple of minutes, really. So if you got any questions, leave them down below. Hit that like button. And as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out.